<laughs> Hello. How are you, man? I'm good, actually. How are you doing? But just kind of for people who don't know you, can you kind of just introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about the work you're doing? Yeah, so I am, uh, I like to wear a lot of hats because I noticed that having different things to work in makes me happy. I like being able to enjoy this and then do something else. So I am a cosplayer, voice actor, writer, and game designer. Wow, um, that's a lot of hats. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the cosplay has just been, it's been fun because I like being able to get into a character and it, it's a sense of confidence and comfort. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I don't have to be gay, I don't have to be shy. I can be whoever this person is and then just have a great time. I, I started doing writing stuff because I like telling stories and then I realized I could actually tell stories that other people could enjoy, which led to a lot of the game design stuff. And the voice acting was, was a little bit more by chance because mm -hmm. I had... So it's one of those things where it's like, that's cool. I want to do it. And then someone sent me a link to an audition and I was like, you know what? I'll do it. And I like, it was, it was for a random dating sim thing, but I got the role. I loved oh, it. Wow. Um, I bought a microphone, a mixer. I already loved doing audio editing stuff. So I just jumped into it. Yeah. You have a really great voice. Like, I feel like this is work you're supposed to be doing definitely. Yeah. And it yeah. sounds like the whole kind of nerd culture Every yeah. like it, there's just welcoming arms for Gabe. Like, yeah. and, like they want you. You, this is where it, you belong. We're all in the same tribe here. It blows my mind because, um, like, even even like a year ago, I was I was nowhere near where I am now. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that took the difference was being confident in myself and just doing it. Because mm -hmm. it's not even like I'm doing as much different things. I'm just more confident about it, and I I put what I do out more. And I just had to put myself out there, as as like cliche as it is to say. Can you tell me a little bit about that confidence? Like, what do you do to find confidence? What did Gabe do to find the confidence that he needed? Um, it, it was, it's a mix of things. One is music. There is music that has every tone that exists in the world. Mm -hmm. And literally sometimes I'll put on like Spotify or some music app and then just put on a mood that I want to like delve into. If it's like happy, if it's like adventurous, it's just finding. And then when I find that one song, it's like, you know, actually, it, it, just come, it just comes together. Um, and I think part of it is it's looking at some of the bad, like thinking of like grief. It's like, okay, I struggled with this. These things made me sad. Mm -hmm. But what can I do that helps me move past it? Or not even move past it, but how can I succeed besides that? Mm -hmm. And then like, it's like, okay, this thing sucked, but it motivated me because it sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, music, finding that one key song can somehow just tie everything together for you. Can you yeah. um, give me an example of a moment where you found a song and, and what song was it that actually served that purpose for you? Uh, so this is, this is a, it's a really weird example. There was a a Zarkali Rage Jepsen song called Turn Me On and the lyrics okay. are so weird um, <laughs> but like the beat of it is upbeat and yeah. happy and I literally like heard it come on the radio and it's like years it's like five or six years old it's not even new but I was like I want to be happy like this yeah. makes me want to just like enjoy myself do something fun yeah I sat down um, and recorded like two three video skits just just for fun and then I'm like Damn, I like doing this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So, so uh, mu music is one of the things that that serves as an outlet for you, or serves as like a, uh, it gives you. It like shines a light in the direction you're supposed to go in. Yep. Because yeah, it's, it's it's almost like feeling feeling recognized and understood is mm -hmm. what helps me move forward. It's like you know what this song gets me, even if it's happy or sad or the lyrics are weird. It's like I I feel better and that's all I, that's all I needed so the reality of the pandemic right now how has it limited your work life your your creativity and how are you trying to circumvent those things can you talk about that uh, yeah so it it did kind of suck um because <laughs> a lot of a lot of what I like to do when I'm creating I like to just go out somewhere and yeah. create like go to the mall and like I'll, I'd, I would go to the mall and take my notebook and just sit and write my notebook because it'd be somewhere different or go to Starbucks, mm -hmm. get something nice to drink, sit and chill. So now I'm pretty much stuck at home. Mm -hmm. And 
for a while, I was like, this is terrible. I'm not getting anything done. And I was stressing myself out. And then I started, I realized if, if what I'm doing now is stressing myself out, then I have to change my routine. Mm -hmm. I started like actively making myself go to sleep later than like three in the morning. Mm -hmm. I started making myself get up early in the day and I would be like, you know what? I'm going to exercise. I'm going to hate it at first, Mm -hmm. but a, when I was up at like eight in the morning and exercising, after I was done, I felt like I had so much energy to do whatever I wanted. I was getting things done sooner in the day. And when I got things done sooner in the day, I realized I had more free time during the evening mm-hmm. to feel like I had like the opportunity to do things. I don't even have to do things, but I realized if I gave myself the chance to, that yep. was more than enough. So, so talk about the challenge of, of trying to shift your biological day-night clock from uh from it sounds like you were a night owl yeah, yeah. and now you're a, a early bird gets the worm kind of guy pretty much yeah yeah it's how, how did you do that like that like like that seems, seems impo- like a huge huge shift yeah <laughs> <laughs> it really was yeah i i well one thing was i i had to acknowledge just the way my mind works I had to move my phone away from my bed because I will automatically turn off alarms like subconsciously. You won't be aware, but it's off. Yes. Yeah. I'll I'll, like literally. (laughs) And I I noticed it because I was set like three alarms and nothing. I didn't wake up. And then it said I dismissed them. And I'm like, how? So I had to literally like understand, okay, I have to move my phone somewhere (laughs) else. So I make myself get up. And then when I'm standing it's like all right i'm already standing let's just do it keep going Um, yeah we got some momentum here something else was i started like if i wanted to have a good start or like start early Mm -hmm. just make something or figure out what i want to eat in the morning the night before because if i still have energy like at like 11 o'clock and i'm like what what am i going to want tomorrow because i'm not going to want to make something sometimes i'll literally like like cook something in the morning or like i'll uh, maybe I want like a protein bar and like an apple or something. Mm-hmm. And if it's already up here, I'm like, I don't even have to move. I, yeah. I, nighttime Gabe is helping out morning. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, it's little, I guess it's planning ahead, but yeah. planning ahead for things that seem obvious until like you actively do it. And it's like, why haven't I been doing this before? Yeah. I think that self-awareness, like knowing yes. Gabe well enough and understanding Gabe's appetites, even if they're not necessarily good or healthy appetites and being, knowing those appetites, you can circumvent them or find, you know, like, what can we do if, if Gabe wants food, we're going to have food out for him when he wakes up in the morning, like almost as if you're in the third person. Right. Uh, I think that's so smart. It was, it was realizing the difference between who I think I am and knowing who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Good for you. Seriously. I I think you should, you should write a self-help book. Like that, that's really, I, I have, I have actually you. started. Have you I, really? Like, yeah. I, wow. this, so the past, the past two years were like both, it started the worst and then it has become some of the best. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to people about it and I talked to people about it because I realized my experience, it's like the music thing. If someone else feels heard or recognized in any way and feels like they're not alone in it, then it just makes them feel better. So mm-hmm. I've been writing that because it's like, if I had heard some of this stuff from someone else or if I had read this from someone else beforehand, I probably wouldn't have been in some of the, the like frustrating or lost situations. Yep. And it's, it's not always about uh, what would have been better for me, but like who's, what's better for the next person in line. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as far as getting your brain uh, being productive, because you're still being creative and still generating your, your work and getting your mm-hmm. art out there and making the things that are important for you, mm-hmm. uh, like, how are you doing that? How are you, how are you not sort of just wallowing in depression or, or just feeling gloomy? How are you shaking that off and moving forward? Honestly, when it, when it happens, even a couple of days ago, I had, a, I had a day where I was just sad and I was like, this, this just all sucks. I used to try to shake myself out of it mm-hmm. and I realized I need to let myself just let it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was, it was like, it was like 10 or 11 o'clock and I was like, I don't know, I'm doing all this stuff, but it doesn't matter. This, everything sucks already. It's just going to get worse. And literally I just went to sleep. 
I was like, I'm not even that tired, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to sit in bed, let myself be sad for as long as I need to be sad because it doesn't have to be permanent. And if I try to like pretend it doesn't exist, it's just going to come back. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just needed to let myself not feel good for like half an hour. And then when I went to sleep, I woke up and I was, a, it, I was like in a better mindset, almost as if like sleeping, let me actually accept it without trying to fight it. Mm -hmm. So sort of just allowing it to run its course rather than trying to fight it every step of the way. Yep. Yeah. And so it's saving that energy. Do, it's going to be there. It's so going to be there. I have to let it, I have to let the energy expend itself. What's made you happiest during this time? I've realized how much I've actually done because I've, I've, I've had so many times that I've had to just like, sit and not do something mm -hmm. because having so much time i feel like all right well i need to be busy all the time busy all the time busy all the time and i i finished two major projects last week oh wow I, yeah and then i yeah. sat down and i was like i still have so much stuff that i don't need to do but that i wanted to do and then i was i was like looking through the stuff that i'd already written or looking through the stuff that i'd finished I re like I hadn't taken time before quarantine to sit and realize I did a lot like mm -hmm. just in the past few months. Mm -hmm. So it made me sit down and consider the perspective of how hard I'm working and also consider I can have these million things that I want to do, but I should also try to do them well, not just keep mm -hmm. myself busy. Mm -hmm. And that, it, that really changed my perspective of, what i want to put time and effort into because it's like i bef again before quarantine i was like all right i'm gonna do this thing and then after that this and then after that this and then after that this because it's like feeling like i gotta keep the hustle going but it might even be partially related to just me feeling down and sad i was like okay what's what do i actually care about though mm -hmm. and then what do i what do i want to get done and then what am i excited about mm -hmm. getting done mm -hmm. And I've been sitting down and thinking about it. And I picked like two things out of like a pot of ideas I had. And now they're actually happening. Yeah. And it, it, it probably wouldn't have had, like it's, it's a horrible situation that led to it. But I'm thankful for, for what came out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the Gabe, you know, mid-pandemic more than you liked pre-pandemic Gabe? Or do you like them both about the same? I think I like them both about the same. Yeah. And I think it's specifically because I'll, I'll send you something. Cause I, okay. uh, one of, one of my pastime things was I made, uh, I recorded a spoken, spoken word poem to myself when I was happier. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, I like both of those games because I'm very excited to see who they'll become together when pandemic is over mm -hmm. because then he'll be, they'll both be in an even better situation. They'll have more creative freedom. They'll have more ability to go out in places that help them feel more comfortable, but with less of the restrictions. Mm -hmm. And if, if I was able to be so productive before and then even more productive now, it means that if I actively take what I learned from when I'm restricted to when I have more freedom, yes. it's, it's almost like impossible to think that I won't be happier and doing better yeah. if I'm like managing to find happiness now. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to air these on, on Twitch. Um, is there a way for you to share that poem? Yeah. Like I'd yeah. love for people who w watch this interview to be able to appreciate it and enjoy it as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I will send it to you. Now the, the last thing I'll ask, and then I'll let you go back to your, the rest of your day, but mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time so far. Yeah, I really appreciate absolutely. it, Gabe. Um, you seem like a, a person who really enjoys collaborating with other people. Yes. How have you been able to be Gabe without collaboration or as much collaboration as you used to have in your life? I think it's, I think it's been adaptation actually. What do you um, mean by that? So a lot of, a lot of my general work, um, it had like my, my freelance work hasn't actually changed. Because mm -hmm. most of my work is collaborating with people from a distance. Because I'm, I am, I live in Pennsylvania, so I live on the East Coast. So I'm not really around as much of the media-centric stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So more often than not, I'm video chatting with people, I'm voice calling with people, and it's actually been almost more possible because more people, since they're stuck or can't really go out to do as much, they're wanting to collaborate through the internet, through different mediums. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've been playing games with new people. I recorded a song with someone for fun. I oh, wow. uh, started writing a, a story project with someone because they were just like, hey, I want to do something else. I've, I've, I started doing like just random TikTok videos because I like making videos in short format. And then I, through that, I found so many other new creators mm-hmm. who were cosplayers and designers and storytellers. And it's, it's one of those things where a terrible situation led to me meeting so many more new people because it's Mm -hmm. like would i have reached out to these people if i if if this hadn't happened or would these people have reached out to me so i think i think especially after this i am way less shy about reaching out to do things yeah because it 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 don't i had to like force myself out of like you know what if i want to do this thing now is the time to do it people have more time or people want to do more things and being shy can be good for me, but being bold and just going for it can make a world of a difference. And the worst, the worst is if I want to collaborate with someone, they say no. Right. It doesn't mean I won't make a new friend or meet someone new or get in touch with someone who teaches me something. Yeah. Oh man, I'm talking to you is really like talking to the sunshine. I mean, it's just so <laughs> you're so positive and, 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 and you're saying so many I know you're you're a young guy and you're saying so many wise evolved things like I I'm just really was, hats off. It would thank you. It was a lot of learn cuz like I was saying at least at least once a week I have a day where depression hits like a freight train. I would and, never guess that about you. <laughs> yeah. And I I think for for a while I I did do like the unhealthy action of trying to hide it. And mm-hmm. I think when I stopped hiding it, I don't even I convinced myself hiding it also meant hiding it from myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to do that. I can let myself, it, it's like I was saying, I need to let myself be lost or unhappy or frustrated. And even sometimes I'll like reach out to friends and I, I have a couple friends that I've specifically said, sometimes I'm having a rough day. So I'll like, I'll emphasize if I lead with this sentence, I really just want to express this to someone. I'm, I'm okay, but I just need to say it to someone. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's something like today I was thinking about, and then I'll like send like a paragraph or something. And I have a friend who it was like, I appreciate it. I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. And that has been one of the best things. It's, it's a mix of finding ways to talk about it. Yeah. That are actively healthy ways to do it. Yeah. And then also not hiding from myself. Cause I, I, for myself say, I, Hiding the, hiding the anxiety, the depression, the concern from myself was probably the worst part of it. Mm-hmm. Because you, you can hide it from other people, but then if you try to lie to yourself and convince yourself that's not the case, it, it doesn't do any good and it just gets worse and worse. Yep. And I hit that point where it was like, I'm sad and exhausted and tired and this is stupid. And it didn't get to like a crisis point but it was just, I was unmotivated to do anything. And when I stopped, it was almost like shock to my system when I stopped lying about it. Yeah. I, I might have a day where literally all I did was lay in bed. But yeah. the next day I got up, I made breakfast. I like went outside for a nice walk. I might read a book, listen to that one song. And then it's like, I'm not great, but I'm okay. And yep. that's, that's, that's enough. Like that's, that's more enough. than enough. That's right. That's right. Uh, man, I, I really feel like I should fire my therapist and hire you. <laughs> Honestly, I, I feel so good talking to you. I'm, I'm super gloomy all the time. And now I just, I feel like Gabe's right. Like we're learning stuff about ourselves and we're learning stuff about the world and we're still able to do our work and our work is only going to be better because of this. Good things, man. Good yeah. things. It's good. Good things can come out of tragedy. And it is sad, but it's, I feel like it's also just human nature. We, yeah. as chaotic as we are, we adapt. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we adapt in ways we didn't expect, but we really need it. Yeah. You are doing a heck of a job adapting right now. 
I'm trying. Yeah, I hope at some point our our paths cross so we cross so we can meet in person. Yeah, you know, let's make it happen. Let's make I'm it happen. Let's make it happen. Time. Yeah, thank you so much, Gabe. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's I like talking about this stuff, especially because then it's it's like that reminder for me. You know what? I am doing okay. You're doing like, great. I, I might even be doing like pretty good like some days and it's, it's like, okay yeah you're in one of the upper percentiles for sure my friend you're you're doing a great job and and really again like it it's enviable what you're doing for yourself and and i hope people who who will see this learn learn from you and and uh, keep keep spreading the good word okay thank you yeah, yeah. absolutely all right Gabe, take care and send me that uh, send me the poem you got it okay thanks buddy all right i'll see you soon Bye.